Hello and welcome to the third and final lesson on statistical testing. In this video we're going to look at the sign test, the only statistical test that you could be asked to calculate. Now as I just said this is the third video for statistical testing and so a very brief recap of the content from the first two videos is on the screen right now. If you haven't watched those videos or if you feel like you need a little bit of a refresher on the content then the links will appear on the screen for you now. They're also in the description section and they'll appear at the end of the video as well. But you should definitely go back and check those out so that you completely understand what is going on in this video. So to start off with, we need to know that the sign test is used under the following conditions. When we're doing a test of difference rather than a correlation. When we're using nominal data, which is categorical data. And finally, when we are using a related design. Now a related design means that we either have a repeated measures or a matched pairs design in our experiment. So for this lesson, we're gonna be using a study that looks at the impact of CBT on depression. Our hypothesis is that there will be a difference in depression score before and after a six week course of CBT. It's a simple, basic hypothesis, but it'll do the job for now. In our study, we took 10 patients and we measured their level of depression before and after a six week course of CBT. And we gave them a depression score before and after that course of CBT. These are the results that we got. Okay, so in the first column, you can see the depression score before therapy. And in the second column, you can see the depression score after therapy. What we wanna know now is whether or not the differences in those scores is significant or not. So step one in conducting the sign test is working out the difference between the two sets of data, which involves subtracting one set of data from the other. So after a little bit of maths wizardry, these are my results. Now just a couple of pointers for you at this stage. First thing is you don't need the exact figure. You just need to know whether it's a plus or a minus because the plus and the minus are essentially your signs that you're gonna need for the sign test. Okay, so in this case, I've given you plus two, plus 15, minus four, and so on. But actually, all we really need is plus, plus, minus. The second thing is that it doesn't matter which column is subtracted from which. Yes, the signs will be switched around, but it really doesn't matter because at the end of the day, you'll still have the correct answer. Step two is adding up the total number of pluses and minuses. So in our case, we have five pluses and three minuses. Now importantly, where there is no difference, the data can be ignored. You're gonna need that for later on. So for all intents and purposes, the participants are deleted if there is no difference in the before and after score. Step three is finding the least occurring sign. Okay, so in our case, the least occurring sign is minus because it occurs only three times. That means that our calculated value of S is three. Now another value that we're gonna need going forward is our N value, which is the amount of participants that we have. Now on first glance, we have 10 participants because it says so in the table right there. But if you remember, we have to discount all of those with a difference of zero. Like I said before, they are, for all intents and purposes, deleted from the study. And so actually, our n value is 8, not 10, because we have to discount the two where the difference was 0. And finally, step 4, we have to compare our calculated value to our critical value. Now, the critical value can be found in the critical values table, which will always be given to you. So to find the right value, you have to ask yourself a series of questions. Number 1. Is your test one-tailed or two-tailed? Okay, so we know that our test is two-tailed because we're using a non-directional hypothesis. The next question is, what is the significance level being used? And if you remember from previous videos, unless you are told otherwise, the significance level is always 0.05. So that's the next little bit of information that we have. And then we also need to know how many participants there are. And like we worked out earlier, our n value is eight. Okay, so that leaves us with a critical value of zero, right? The final little bit of information that we are gonna be given, and again, you will be given this every single time when this comes up in an exam question, is this. 
the calculated value of s must be equal to or less than the critical value in order to be significant. That's the final little bit of information that you need, and I'll repeat, you will be given this in an exam, okay? So, armed with all of that information, the important bits of which are now on the screen for you again, just to remind you, we can now say with 95% certainty, and 95% because our significance level is 0 0.05, that our results are not significant. And why? Because our calculated value is greater than the critical value. And in order for it to be significant, the calculated value needs to be equal to or less than the critical value. Okay? So if this comes up in an exam, you are almost certainly going to be asked to determine whether or not something is statistically significant and justify your answer. So you would go through this process if it's the sign test, and then you would write an answer that looks something like that. The calculated value of S equals 3 is greater than the critical value of 0. Therefore, the difference in depression score before and after therapy is not significant. It's nice to bring the hypothesis in there again a little bit just to remind people what it is that we're actually looking into. If you want, you can also talk about the fact that we should be accepting the null hypothesis and rejecting the alternative hypothesis, but that's not something that you have to do unless you're specifically asked to do so. And finally, if you want to present the findings from the statistical test in a little bit of a shortened form, then you can do so. It would look a little bit like what I've put at the bottom of the box in bold. However, make sure that you do this in addition to a fully written answer, not instead of. Because a fully written answer will show the examiner that you actually understand what is going on. So that's the end of the video. The links to videos 1 and 2 should be on your screen now. So if you need a quick refresher of the content, go ahead and check those out. Of course, if you've got any questions, then please pop them in the comments section and I will get back to you ASAP. I hope it's been useful, I hope it's all made sense, and thank you very much for listening.